Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and today I thought we'd do something a little different. We're gonna pull some shots out of these 1964 for Emma Firminas. Now these machines are part of my vintage collection, and they're 58 years old, so it'll be a fun video to do. First things first, let's start by pulling some shots out of these 58 year old machines. Now these machines have been built to spec, so it'll be interesting to see what they can do. We've loaded the porter filter and tamped it with a 51mm tamper. It's just gonna lock in a porter filter here, and because we're running one espresso, we're gonna pull it down, hold it for 10 seconds, let it infuse and bring it back up. If we're running two cups, we'll do the process twice. And just releasing that lever, letting it engage and pull back. Something quite satisfying from playing with a vintage machine. And there you have it. It's gonna keep dripping because there's nothing actually cutting it. It's not a modern machine where you've got a solenoid that turns off. But if you let it drip and we'll just try it. It's nice. It really is nice for a vintage machine. I mean, it's hard to compare it. We were just playing with the Lama Zorka Lever X recently and we've got the Flare 58 here. So they are different experiences, but there's something quite nice about playing and drinking from a vintage machine. I guess it's just a little different. So filling this machine up with water. Firstly, you wanna have the machine off. If the machine is cold, you can just open this up and fill your water in. If it's hot, as this machine doesn't have a water reservoir, you're filling it directly into the tank. Much like a car radiator, you can't just open it up. So what you have to do is open your steam valve to let it depressurize. So we've already lost pressure, so there's no steam coming out. If there's no steam coming out, although this is still really hot, you have to be careful, it relatively is safe to pull out and lift up and fill up. Just lift the top of the unit out. Now just lifting this top of the unit out, I've got some water here. We can pour water in. Ideally, you're doing it when the machine's a little bit colder. But we're just filling that back up. And then putting that top back on, just being careful because it is hot. Yeah, but ideally you're not doing it when it's hot, you're doing it a bit cooler. I just wanted to show for the video how it's done. And then we've got the water back in there. We can flip the machine back on and it'll build up pressure. We've got it on min, but you can also run it on max. Just making sure that the valve is closed once it's heating up so that it will pressurize. Now, before we jump in and look at this machine in terms of how it came about, I'd like to know in the comments below, what's your favorite vintage machine? I wanna kinda of get a feel for people's favorite machine and maybe I'll try to get it on the channel and play with it for everyone to see. So for me, these machines in the Fama range are some of my favorites. I actually have a few Famas, the Fama E61, the one group, two group, and the three group, a Fama Lombro, which is a lever machine too, very, just predating the E61. We got three of the Fama Feminas, which you see here, and we got the Fama Femina Baby. So I am a bit of a fanboy when it comes to vintage Famas. For Emma as a factory started in 1945 and they became quite famous with the E61 design. That's a grouper that's still used on many modern coffee machines, especially in the higher end domestic market. When it came to the Fama Feminas, they were around for a while and these are from 1964. These models are actually the V2.0 and there have been models before and after. The earlier models had a different switch. These models went into having the two ceramic switches and as they evolved, they tightened up a few things here and there, but I do feel the 2.0, the ones that we have here, were probably the nice balance between evolution and vintage. With these particular machines, I actually found them in a strange way. So many years ago, I was in Newtown and I went into an antique shop. I was looking for coffee gear, old Atomicas, etc., and I saw one of these machines and I wanted it. I had to have it. I spoke to the owner of the shop and it was the only item in a vintage shop that wasn't for sale. And I thought he was just trying to lift the price up on me, but no, this guy would not budge and he did not sell me the machine. 
I was a bit disappointed. And a few months later, I was in Italy. And while traveling the north of Italy, I found one in Florence and I bought it. And then while I was in Milan, I bought another one and then later at Lake Garda on the same trip, I walked into a shop and they were using one. I had money on me. They didn't find the machine all that special. So I ended up with this machine lugging around on this little boat around Lake Garda. It was actually a pretty cool story and I did look like a weirdo. So I had these back in the warehouse here in Sydney for ages on a display shelf, but we weren't using them. And one of our regular customers, Eden, who used to build machines, like both vintage machines and kind of turn things like Sylvia's into Frankenstein's, told me, Pedro, let me build them for you. And I'd seen the level of his builds and I was like, you know what, go for it. So he actually ended up building my E611 one group, my E611 two group, and all three of these Feminas. Now I've actually done a video talking with Eden about the build of these machines, which you can click on the link above to have a look at. When it comes to three machines, I bought these three by accident. I actually only wanted one and then I saw another one, saw the third and bought them on the same trip. But I do have a few things in threes. I've got the E61s in threes, the one, two and three group. And I've got the Mazza collection, which I had an artist called Danny Willens paint them as a tribute to my dad's artworks. So weirdly enough, the collection of threes have become quite important to me and they represent me, my mum, and my dad. Kind of weird, but it is a thing that I've gone down with. With the Mazas, we actually did a video talking to Danny Willens, who airbrushed them and the story behind them, which you can click on the link above to dive into that and have a look. I know the threes don't make sense, but I'm kind of going down this line Another thing I fell in love with was serial numbers. And that's a whole different video. I got machines of specific serial numbers, like 001 or 005, which is my lucky number. And I kind of became obsessed. So my collection's kind of grown. And sometimes I just have to buy things because of the serial number or to have a collection of three or whatever it might be. Now talking about these Faemas, they're heavy little units. They're 11 kilos in weight and they're made of cast bronze. They run two elements inside, a 200 watt and 800 watt. So you could have your switch on min or max. So min being the 200 watts and max being both elements together. So a thousand watts, the 200 and the 800. And at the time they were quite modern in the sense that although the glass here was for a sight glass, being able to see your spring was kind of cool. And all the design for it being a home machine, it was a lever machine, you could do steam. I found them quite cool. There's something about this machine that to me feels special. It feels vintage yet modern at the same time. And I am biased because they are my machines and they're machines that I really wanted it and to me mean something. But I'd like to know your thoughts. What are your favorite vintage machines? Let me know in the comments below. I wanna see what's popular. Is it the Faemas? Is it the vintage Guardias? The old Lama Zorkos, like the GSs? Let me know what your favorite machine is, and hopefully the most popular ones I'll try and find and get on the channel. And like always, if this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up and please subscribe. We're gonna be doing a lot of reviews, not only on new machines, machine comparisons, vintage machines, machines that are in my collection, as well as interviews with people that have formed my coffee journey. So please subscribe and see you on the next video. Thank you again.